Hi, this is Jim Conner. Welcome back to this next segment of Game Changer Silicon Valley. As I uh, explained in our earlier segments, we're here in Shanghai, China. I'm delighted to have William Bean here, Managing Director of China Accelerator and a partner in SOS Ventures. William, welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. We talked a little bit yesterday. I'm very impressed with what you've got going here in terms of the uh, accelerator and what and, and the innovation is taking place. Can you tell us a little bit about China Accelerator? Sure. So China Accelerator is the first accelerator in China. We took the TechStars model out to China in 2010. We're a founding member of the Global Accelerator Network, GAN. So we get the same perks as all the other TechStars accelerators around the world. Uh, but we're in China, so a long way from Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I met some of the GAN uh, accelerators. This is an overall umbrella organization. Is that correct? How yeah, it's an works? umbrella organization yeah. uh, that's uh, for uh, shared learning, yeah. shared perks. But the key thing is we, we, five years ago, brought that sort of Techstar style of accelerator to China. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently in China, there are 2,500 incubators. So the incubator has taken off, model has taken off in China, whereas it did not take off in the U.S. But in China, there are only four accelerators, uh, and we're the first. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the middle of batch seven. Uh, things are going really well. This is batch seven of companies, so you had seven classes, you might say, or seven segments. Sure, right? in the early days, it was a little rough, so we yeah. did one batch per year. Uh -huh. uh, but starting last year uh, with uh, batch four, we started two batches a year, 10 companies each batch. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, SOS Ventures, I'll just give you a little intro. Sure. Uh, we're a $235 million evergreen fund. Mm -hmm. We're the accelerator VC. So there's a manager rank. Managing Director, uh, Sean O'Sullivan, that's the SOS, uh, and he was the founder of uh, MapInfo uh, in college, took it public in the late 80s. Sure. He also co-coined the term cloud computing. Mm -hmm. We know this because he trademarked it so that nobody else could squat on it and use it, <laughs> uh, but actually did a startup around cloud computing. So he's been investing since 1996, I started bringing partners on seven or eight years ago. Now there are five partners on SOS Ventures. Each partner runs their own accelerator. So we go by uh, focus area as opposed to geography. I run China Accelerator and we're global internet. Then we have Hackcelerator, the number one hardware accelerator in the world, based in Shenzhen and San Francisco, run by Cyril Ebeswire. Uh, we have two biotech programs, one in San Francisco, uh, Indie Bio US, and one in Ireland, Indie Bio Europe, right in the middle of their first batch and then FoodX in New York, getting mm -hmm. ready for their second batch. All part of SOS Ventures. All part of SOS Ventures. Okay. Uh, so the Accelerator VC allows us to get outsized returns. I think we have a 36% realized net IRR over the last 18 years. If we were a normal VC, uh, it would put us in the top 3% globally. Mm -hmm. Realized returns now? Is realized. This? Realized net. return, net realized after fees and all that kind of stuff. Exactly, after fees That's and care. That's very, very good, very impressive. How are things here in China specifically? You're opening this up to roughly 10 companies per, per batch, batch. Uh, two batches a year. Yeah. So uh, the accelerator model did not work. A lot of guys opened up accelerators in, early in China. Mm -hmm. Culturally speaking, it wasn't a fit, but we're global. Our program is in English, okay? And we're cross-border. So for your audience in Silicon Valley, we help companies in the US and Europe perhaps not go global from day one, but do global from year one. Come into China, come into Asia. So we're the landing pad. So a lot of our companies are a bit later stage than most accelerators take. A lot of companies not only have product, but they also have traction revenue in their home markets. And we're bringing them out to Asia. And we do that for Chinese companies as well. We help Chinese companies go out to Southeast Asia, go out to the US and Europe if there's a fit here. The issue that many US firms, many startups have when they come to Asia is the same issue that the large internet companies had when they came to Asia. So Google failed in China, eBay failed in China, Amazon's failing in China. Uh, every single major internet company in the world that has come to China has failed. There's many reasons why. What we do is, for on the startup side, we take a lean startup approach to building a China presence. Mm -hmm. Small team, product market fit, mm -hmm. and then we accelerate and grow the customers and the business, build a business model within the context of China. Mm -hmm. Is there a sector focus here at this particular uh, location? So we run global internet uh, right. from China. Uh, okay. Areas of expertise, uh, I've covered uh, travel. Uh, B2B is pretty big for cross-border. Travel, education, games, uh, especially mobile games. We do uh, e-commerce, 
and then social. Uh, so it runs the gamut. Yep. I think the key thing is what we're trying to do is bring uh, some of the business models that can work from the US and Europe into China and the other emerging markets. Uh, so China is the largest mobile first, mobile only market in the world. Uh, six, seven hundred million mobile users, mobile internet users. A lot of the innovation uh, around mobile is coming out of China and then going to the other five billion. Mm -hmm. So in the US, you have companies developing for the first billion, you know, for the people who learned and then first encountered the internet on a PC. Mm -hmm. Well, in China, people first encountered the internet on a mobile. So a lot of times, what's built in the US and Europe does not translate particularly well over to China, Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe, South America. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can tell quite quickly whether uh, what a US company or European company has developed makes sense in the emerging markets, in the mobile first, mobile only markets, and then we can bring them here, help build a team, um, build a model, and then accelerate through to, uh, to growth. Mm -hmm. So it's the landing pad. Yeah, so you're really finding the, the right entrepreneurs from different parts of the world. They're not just Chinese entrepreneurs, they're from all over the world. Yeah, so I would say yeah. uh, nine out of 10 are not from China. A lot, of, a lot are returning from other countries. Yeah. So in the last two batches, we have three companies from Hong Kong, a company from the UK, two companies from New York, a company from Canada, a company from Chile, mm. uh, and then, uh, and then the rest, you know, another five or seven uh, from China. Um, it's a very international group yeah. with a, a lot of uh, talent from around the world. Right. And the interesting thing is, that, and not on purpose, but uh, we're probably have the largest female representation of any accelerator in the, hist in the, in the world now uh, and back through history. Uh, so we have 50% uh, female CEOs and a majority of co-founders who are female. Not by plan, but it's yeah. great to happen. Great to uh, it's, it's really uh, keeps, uh, because we are a traditional accelerator, all the teams are helping each other mm -hmm. uh, and it gives a, a balance and a different perspective, a uh, much more positive perspective. Yeah within the program. There's some comments that the women excel, or women CEOs and founders are the ones who are making the real money right now. For some reason, we're not sure if this is just a, an aberration in the law of averages or something, but that seems to be happening right now. A couple people have discussed yeah. that extensively. Are you finding anything unusual in the women in terms of the skill set, just to kind of take that branch for a moment? Anything different about them? Is it the markets or uh, maybe their ability to multitask perhaps <laughs> more efficiently? Well, I think it, it, yeah. maybe there's a historical reason. The, I, you know, I, I've, I've been out of the U.S. for about 12 years now. Uh, so I left Silicon Valley when the 30 under 30 in the Valley were in middle school. Uh, so I'm a little outside <laughs> of what's going on uh, in the Valley now. Mm -hmm. But I'd say within the context of China, uh, what you have, uh, one of the few benefits of uh, the Chinese political system is that there's a, a sense of meritocracy. So I think the female senior executives in the U.S., maybe 15, 20%, something like that, mm -hmm. don't have the exact number. But in China, it's upwards of 30% in the C-suite mm -hmm. are female. Mm -hmm. So in China, you get a lot more uh, uh, senior managers, executives, entrepreneurs, uh, people in the C-suite, people who pop, pop out and become CEOs mm -hmm. in China than you do see in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Great, that's very insightful. Uh, I had not known this, so I, I welcome that, and thank you for giving us that. SOS Ventures, then, is also providing funding to the companies coming through the accelerator as they start to go out, is that correct? Yeah, so yeah. we're the accelerator VC. We're a VC yeah. uh, that runs five accelerators plus right. some one-off. Right. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we like a traditional Techstars type of program. Mm -hmm. We fund the teams coming in. Uh, we give them a program, three months, working in our offices with our 105 mentors. At least for China Accelerator, we have 105 mentors. Mm -hmm. Same for the other programs. We have a demo day. We uh, introduce them to the fundraising uh, public, the angels and the VCs. Right. The key thing was we lead uh, some right. deals. We follow in a lot of deals. Mm -hmm. So, so far, uh, the last batch and this batch, we're leading uh, or following on about half of the companies that come through the accelerator. We just recently announced a matching fund with Omnicom Group, uh, which is a large 4A agency, global agency. Uh, they called off their uh, merger recently with Publicis, mm -hmm. but they're, they're one of the big three, mm -hmm. uh, WPP and Publicis, where they're putting in 25,000 US dollars per company uh, and three companies in this current batch seven, as well as the next batch eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're matching another 25K. Mm -hmm. 
so there's that type of follow-on, but there's also two batches out of uh, two companies out of the last batch where we led the round, and other angels followed. Yep, good. Hey, this has been very insightful. What's the best way for a company to contact your accelerator if they yeah. want to be considered? So we have a, a ChinaAccelerator.com, and there's okay. an apply button. Okay. Uh, it's all F success. So hopefully we don't make you redo your entire application. <laughs> We're really interested in who you are and the problem you're trying to solve. Not necessarily so interested in your product, but love to see it. But again, what, what problem are you trying to solve? Why are the team to do it? And then how can we help you take your uh, platform or product or service to the world? How uh, th We're not looking so much for uh, uh, something that's super focused on just say the US market. But companies that want to go global from year one, those are the types of applications we'd like to see. Good. You know, I was at your, uh, I watched a little bit of your um, coaching session, and I want to just compliment because you are up there doing the coaching directly with those entrepreneurs. And not, you don't always see that at an, at an accelerator. Okay, well, this yeah. is my first accelerator. Mentor yeah. for five years, but yeah. I took over as MD six months ago. Yeah. Uh, we try and be pretty hands-on yeah. uh, and give good feedback yeah. Yeah. and good support. That's good. Now, you're doing a great job. I was very impressed by what I saw today. Oh, great. So, thanks very much for coming in or stopping by. We'll include a few pictures. We've got the contact information, and uh, I want to wish you every success going forward. And uh, we'll follow, follow up with you in a few months, see how things are going. Great. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, uh, come back to China anytime. Will do. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for joining us for tonight's special episode of Game Changers from Shanghai, China. We'll be back next week with a new episode of the people who are the innovators of today who may be the game changers of tomorrow. Good night now.